Welcome everyone, Michael here from Offshore Citizen. Today we're going to talk about how Americans can get $10 million plus tax-free on some capital gains in certain situations. So we're gonna talk about that today. It might be useful for a bunch of you who are building companies or looking at building wealth in the future because let's be clear, getting tax-free money, especially $10 million plus, is really substantial. I'm gonna tell you not just about the program, but I'm also gonna tell you about some little tricks you can take advantage on it, and it may affect how you want to structure your business. So we're gonna dive in and talk about that right now. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate your support. Thank you for being here. Give the video a thumbs up at the end if you really like it. Hopefully you do. Tell your friends. And if you are new here, I'm Michael. We are offshore citizens, some of the foremost international tax and revocation specialists. So we're the people who have all the fancy little tax tricks that if you are looking to optimize every way possible legally, it's not kind of skirting the law or whatever, but we know lots of little little things that a lot of people don't know, especially when it comes to cross-border issues. And so if that's interesting to you, please reach out to us. You can book a call with me, calendar.com forward slash michael-rosmer, link in the description below, or you can send a message through offshorecitizen.net. So what I'm gonna talk about is called the Qualified Small Business Shares Exemption. It's section 1202 of the Internal Revenue Code. And I was mentioning, you know, little tricks. Surprisingly to me, quite a few accountants and lawyers don't know about QSBS, which is interesting because it's like this massively valuable thing. I've had clients sell their businesses for over $40 million and get it all tax-free, which is nuts. So we're gonna talk about it. How does this work? So this applies specifically to the sale of the shares of your business, okay? So this doesn't work if you're doing an asset sale. It does not work for selling real estate or something like that. It works for selling a business. And there are some parameters around that business. So we're gonna talk about it. So a few things that are required here. So first of all, it must be a C-Corp. Okay, so this is pretty relevant since a lot of people will structure an LLC or an S Corp. And frankly, there are many cases where I will advise clients to set up an S Corp or an LLC. And so not necessarily saying that a C Corp is always the best, but to take advantage of this thing, a C Corp is definitely the best. If you're thinking that, hey, listen, in the future, I may be selling the company and I may be a sizable sale, then having a C Corp is probably a good idea. What is next? The next is you must hold the shares for five years or more. Okay, so you can't just do a quick flip like, hey, let me throw it in here, you know, next year sell and profit this. No, no, you have to have held for five years. So that's important. The third is you must be an eligible shareholder. This means it can't be held by a company. It must be held by an individual, a trust, a state, things like that. At the time that the company, that the, the well, so first of all, the shares must have been issued by the company. So you can't buy them on a secondary market. I can't go to you, buy shares from you, and then take advantage of QSBS. What I can do is I can say, okay, great, let me buy shares from the company, which could be like for the founder of the company, okay? It could be that, or it could be investing in a startup. So you can literally do this with like angel investing, okay? That's pretty cool. But you must have got the shares from the company. And then at the time that you got the shares, the company must have had assets less than 50 million. So at the time you sell, it could be a billion, it could be 10 billion, right? You could have invested into an early round in a company that went a thousand X and you could take advantage of this. I'll tell you in a minute how much you can take advantage of it for. Uh, that's kind of a different thing, but, uh, but you have that, that opportunity. So this is great. Now it has to be an active business. So these are not like for passive investing, active business. And there are some categories of businesses that it doesn't qualify for. There's a pretty broad range that it does qualify for. It's, you know, pretty, pretty permissive, but, uh, but not all. So now that we've gone through all those, how does this work? So what happens is at the time when you sell the shares, okay, you can get the greater of the following two numbers, either $10 million, this is tax-free, so you get a tax exemption for $10 million, or 10 times the amount of money you invested in the company. So if you kind of started a company, you invested $2 million in kind of putting money into the company over time, you should keep track of that, because what that would mean is that could entitle you for $20 million, which is pretty good, right? There's also an interesting thing you can take advantage of, which is, I was saying there's this $10 million. And so you say, okay, but if I'm selling for $50 million, you know, 10 million, I'm still paying tax on 40 million of that, which, okay, 10 million, like it's a meaningful savings in itself, right? If you were gonna pay even just the federal, like 23.8% tax on, uh, on long-term capital gains, then, you know, you're still talking about saving $2 million. If you have some sort of state tax that you can avoid further, then even better. Now, the thing though, is if you take those shares, you can put them into a trust and then you can take advantage of this exemption for each of the beneficiaries of the trust. So if you say have a family, you're like, hey, I have a spouse and I have three kids, there's five of us, you can take advantage of $10 million per person into that trust. So $50 million gain could be tax-free in that scenario, which is pretty awesome. That's like, that's like a meaningfully large amount of savings. Now, if you're gonna be at you know a billion dollars, no, you won't be able to take advantage of all that. 
But let's be clear, most people obviously will not do that. In fact, most people are gonna be really happy if they're able to sell for $20 million and realize that gain. This is a per person thing. So if there's multiple shareholders, you each get to take advantage of it this way. It's not like per company. And so it's something that not that many people talk about. It probably should be a lot more popular. And if you're thinking about building a company, you should absolutely be considering this in your plan. It also turns out that there's some ways we can structure for Americans international structures such that they can also benefit more through C Corps on reducing the overall earned income tax rate. And so you kind of can get a double whammy in that situation. So you have lots of reasons that a lot of people don't really know about for why a C Corp might actually be more favorable than an LLC or an S Corp. Not in all cases, there's no one size fits all, but uh, in the right situation, yeah, you can save a lot of money. So if you're interested in that or any other kind of depending on where you are living in the world, any other strategies for optimizing your global tax, please reach out to us. You can book a call with me and I will look forward to seeing you on the next video.